Games Workshop feels that its heavy metal paint style is by far the bestest. With its smooth blends that require hours upon hours of painting, you too could paint the most buttery smooth of cod pieces. But guess who disagrees? Orcs. Orcs disagrees. Also me, I kind of disagree as well. So today we paint the biggest orc. We blend nothing, and we prove what metal is truly heavy. I've been painting a lot of the heavy metal style lately, and while I agree that the clean, crisp look is pretty pleasant to look at on the table, there is something to be said about the little bit of your soul that gets drained for every mini you have to paint. So when the makers of Warhammer 40k Warp Forge asked me to paint a Gazgul Thraka to give away, don't worry, you'll learn more about Warp Forge and how to win the model later. It seemed like a perfect opportunity to throw all that boring, smooth blending out the window. Let's get right to it with priming up the model. We start with a unifying color to build from, and we're gonna add some transparent accent colors to build color depth and interest over all the model. This is more of a natural form of how I painted that crazy space dwarf with the wild base colors in the video above. The key is to keep the angle these colors are coming from consistent across the model. And if you don't have an airbrush, don't worry. You can just use a spray can of Rhinox Hide or a similar color over all the model. And then you could build up some of these reds and oranges and blues from above with some glazing or dry brushing. The approach to painting in this style is to create maximum impact and grimdark style with a minimum amount of time. And because of that, we're gonna start with the face. We start here because it's typically the most finicky of things to paint in all of our models. This model has a lot of dark, heavy materials. So it's really important that I make this face really scream at us with color and pop. I'm building up quick layers of highlights, pushing the vibrance as far as I can without worrying at all about the smooth transitions between those layers. Bright colors like lime greens and even yellows have pretty poor coverage by nature. It's just the way that their pigments work. So don't thin these paints very much. You can go over with each level of highlights a few times so you make sure you get full opacity on each buildup of highlights. One thing we're gonna be doing throughout this entire model is using that primer color as our deepest shadow. So we never wanna cover those colors entirely. Instead, wherever we're gonna have a shadow, we leave that be and we just build up our first layers of paint around it. I'm bringing this up now because I'm even doing it here on the face. Typically in mini painting, we put a nice clean base coat over all the skin and build up from there and cover up all the primer, but that's not what we want to do. This simple trick gives us two big benefits. The first one is that we have a unifying shadow color that isn't just black across all of our model and it makes it feel like this whole model is living under the same light source and environment. And second, we save ourselves a ton of time by not having to go back in and create shadows by using washes or glazing in to bring back our darkest colors. I often like to paint the head of my models to full completion before I move on to the rest of the model. This kind of gives me a little quick victory and I feel pretty excited about how the rest of the model can look when it's done and I can rely on that to push myself to finish the entire job. As I reference the cool art that I'm basing this paint job off of for the Warp Forge game, I noticed that Gazgul has a bunch of these patterns and freehand designs on his armor, so we might as well knock those out now. For geometric shapes like these checkerboard patterns, I find that using a pencil to faintly mark the grid really helps. Be sure not to press too hard on the model with your pencil or you'll accidentally rip up your primer. And when it comes to painting on freehand things like these patterns, don't ever use pure white. That's unnatural and it'll immediately look weird on your model. Instead, use a light gray and make sure you thin down your paint quite a bit so you have a lot of control while you're placing these lines. That paint should just easily flow right off the tip of your brush. Don't worry about it giving good coverage. You can build that back up over a few coats while you make sure the edges of your lines are nice, even, and crisp. I like to do this step before building up grime and highlights over the armor, so the patterns blend in with the same amount of wear and shadows. For now, I'll thin some black paint way, way down with water and cover each of those panels with a thin coat, so it kind of brings those colors into line with the rest of the armor. 
because most of our models live in a worn and weathered environment and their armor isn't perfectly clean, don't worry about making sure every little line and detail of this freehand is perfect and crisp. We can always make that look more realistic later with scratches and dings. The majority of Gazgul's armor is black and you'd think the obvious thing to do would be prime the model in black, but that actually is the least interesting way to get something to look cool and black. Instead, we're just going to put those darkest, deepest shadows of pure black just in those areas that would catch the least amount of light. And as we build up to those more highlighted areas, we're gonna see those interesting shifts in color that we put down with the primer earlier. The most important thing about painting this entire model, which will continue once we get to those highlights, is understanding where light would fall on each section of the model by placing shadows and highlights based on that. Understanding the basic shapes of each thing that you're painting and understanding where light would fall for shadows or highlights is one of the most important things we can learn in all of miniature painting. So while we're working through this and creating a cool looking model, this is a really, really important thing to practice because if you keep at it sooner or later, it's gonna become second nature. And you're not even gonna think about where to place the highlights and the shadows. And that's why painting in this gritty style today is such great practice because we're not worrying about anything else. We're not worrying about colors. We're not worrying about smooth blends. We're just focusing on where should the shadows go and where should the highlights go. And speaking of those highlights, we'll follow that same rule of understanding based on the shape of the object. And instead of making these smooth transitions, we're just gonna put a bunch of lines and scratches in those areas. I start my highlights with a mid-tone gray and I eventually will move up to a brighter gray for the scratchy edge highlights and areas that would be the brightest. Now, when I first started miniature painting, I just thought painting in little lines and scratches would be pretty easy and I realized how derpy mine ended up looking, but I've learned a couple of things along the way that I want to pass on to you. First, you're going to want to thin down your paint slightly more than a usual layer consistency. We want that paint to be flowing easily off the end of our brush, and because the paint is slightly thinned, we won't have these massive jumps in brightness as we build up these slashes and scratches over many layers as we build up our highlights. And second, we want to make sure we're just barely grazing the model with the tip of our brush. We don't want these big fat lines. We want nice, really thin ones. Learning to just barely touch the model is great practice for brush control, and it will help you improve your overall painting as you know just how little you need to touch that brush to model to create the effect you're looking for. And finally, I want my scratches to be coming from all different directions. In order to do that, I often find it's easier to rotate the model to give the right angle for the scratches rather than to make my hand do all these different angles that are oftentimes uncomfortable and lead to weird looking fat scratches. Today's video is brought to us by a video game I am legit pumped for. Warhammer 40K Warp Forge. Warp Forge is a free to play collectible digital card game based on the Games Workshop Warhammer 40K universe. I got to try this game out and holy balls is it amazing. What a great combination of what makes CCGs so much fun and the unique feel and strategy of different 40K factions in action. Faction action, get some traction, it will result in satisfaction. The general you choose to lead your army gives unique abilities that you can craft your deck around, and you'll have a ton of army options when the game launches. Space Marines, Orcs, Necrons, Chaos Space Marines, Eldari, and Tyranids. Plus, they'll continue to not only continually improve and update the game, but they're gonna keep releasing more factions with their regular updates. So be sure to click on the link below to add the game to your Steam wish list so you'll know right when it launches. I mentioned earlier that the Gazgul Thraka model I'm painting today is based on the artwork for the Warp Forge game. And speaking of that model, I've got some exciting news for you. There's gonna be a big Warhammer 40K Warp Forge booth at Warhammer Fest in England, coming up April 28th through May 1st. And in addition to being able to demo Warp Forge, you'll also be able to check out this finished mini in person, the one that I'm painting for this video. And you can enter to win that model at the event. Check out the links below so you do not miss this free to play game when it launches later this year. And if you're going to Warhammer Fest, good luck on winning the model.
Now, when it comes to painting in this style or any other in the miniature world, I find that I get most inspired by spending some time on Instagram and looking at painted minis by amazing artists. And I know that if they can paint something that looks really cool with a certain technique or a certain style, that with some practice, maybe I could get there. And there are amazing artists that paint in this more gritty, textured-based style. Two of my favorites are John Margiotta and Sam Lenz. Both of these guys really bring models to life in ways far beyond just smooth, boring blends. Each dot and scratch builds on the story of what brought this character to where they are. And I just love spending time soaking in how cool their models look. And what's great about putting this style into practice is I realize that different materials will build up textures in different ways. And either way, I'm not having to worry about blending things smoothly. I just wanna make sure that the texture is varied based on the surface. For fabrics, I may use a gradual buildup of stippling and dots. For bone, I like to use bigger, scratchier, bold lines, but it doesn't really require a totally different technique for me to stress over as all I'm doing is working my way around the model and focusing on where the light's going to hit it and build the highlights up most at those points. In my very first video on YouTube, I talked about a unique way to paint true metallic metals. And I've evolved that and learned different things over the years. And one of them is the thing I'm most excited to tell you about in this video. And that is how I approach metallics in painting in this style. And before we jump into that exciting thing, let's talk about something that I think is slightly less exciting. And that is that about 60% of you that are watching this right now are not subscribed to this channel. And that makes me a little bit sad. We're so close to 200,000 subscribers to this channel. And if you would do me the honor of subscribing, you could help me get there because I promised myself once I got to 200,000, I would celebrate by buying myself a Choco Taco. And if you've ever had a Choco Taco before, you realize how big of a deal this is. For the metals, because we've added such interesting grimy color depth with our primer and initial warm tints, we can just build up the shine of the metallics and the highlights from there. Because in the world around us, when metals are worn, corroded, or even in shadow, they don't give off that reflection or shine. So I start with a mix of a little bit of black or Rhinox hide with our metallic paint, and then I cut back the shine with not only that, but I thin down the paint a bit with some water. So there's less of those shiny flakes in the mixture as I'm putting on my lines. With this as our first scratchy metallic color, we get the hint of the color and shine we're looking for without building things up too quickly and obviously. From there, it's as easy as just going to a full standard coat of whatever metallic paint you're using and you hit just the edges of the scratching dots and highlights to create those brightest points of light. And just like everything else on this model, we're focusing on the angle that the light would hit the surface and make sure that we're consistent in building up from there. All the different surfaces should feel like the light is hitting them from the same angle. So you can always reference what you've painted last and make sure the light lines up with that for this part as well. And what's great about painting in this more worn and gritty style of metallics is we don't have to worry about all the complex math and science that goes into how the reflections of light works on metallics like we do on really shiny objects like chrome. Here, because most of the metal isn't shiny as much, it wouldn't have as many of those bounce reflections, so our metals can look great without adding all that extra stuff. As I was painting this model, I had this crazy idea to try something new. And I encourage you that when those moments hit you, that you do it. Even if you're doing it for a video and you've never done it before in your life and everyone on the internet's gonna see it and tell you how terrible it turned out, do it anyway. Because if you don't, you're never gonna learn. I wanted to bring a secondary point of focus and interest onto the model. And I decided that a muzzle flare effect that mimics the light and color produced by the barrel of a gun right as it's being shot sounded super cool. I painted some scratchy white concentric circles around each of the barrels. Then I used contrast paints and inks to build up that almost firelight glow that seemed correct in my brain. And I thought, you know, it looks pretty okay. I learned some things and if I tried it again next time, I think I could do it even better, but I don't hate it. If you don't like how this looks, I'm sure you'll tell me in the comments below. That is pretty customary as this is the internet. But on the bright side, at least you didn't have to attempt this yourself to decide this was a look you didn't like. Final thing we do before we make a pretty sweet base for Gazgool is to build up some grit and grime. One of my 
favorite things to do on models. Now there's tons of different techniques and products of all different kinds that can, you can use to do weathering like this, but I'm just gonna keep it fairly simple. I just went with a single thin down pass of Scrag Brown by Citadel. It's my favorite acrylic paint for doing this light rust effect. Of course, you could start with a darker brown first, something like a Doomble Brown, and then move to this lighter color if you wanted a second layer of depth. The last thing we're gonna do is paint up this base that I built inspired by the Warp Forge artwork, including the color scheme and this weird little Space Marine helmet that looks like Gazgul just kicked it in a kickball game or something, because that's how insignificant of a foe an ultramarine is to Gazgul. I build up the color on the rocks with thick paint, moving my brush with the natural curves and striation of the rocks. Nothing is blended. I just pretend that the movement of the brush is less about something technical and more about something almost harmonious. After painting a second, even more punchy highlight to just the edges and most raised part of each of the rocks, I spray down some very thin Doomble Brown with my airbrush. This step pulls together those very defined lines that we just painted on. And we specifically went quite bright in yellow with each of those highlights, knowing that this step would kind of bring them all together and bring them back into a duller state. I bring back that brightest highlight color to just a few select dots and lines to bring them back selectively. And then I bust out a few pigment powders to add some depth and matte texture to the dirt around the base. I can't recommend picking up a handful of different colors of pigment powders enough. My favorite are these Abtalung 502 pigments. It certainly feels that not all pigments are created equal. It's so easy to make it look like you spent so much more time or have so much more technique under your basing than you do with just a little bit of liberal use of pigment powders. This project really was a breath of fresh air to me. I didn't stress about making it perfect for a video or perfect for my army or perfect for a competition. I just focused on some very fundamental but very important parts of miniature painting. And with any luck, maybe a couple of you out there will try this at home as well. I really, really think it will help you in your miniature painting journey, no matter what style of painting you gravitate towards. And hey, thanks for hanging out all the way to the end of the video. If you like what I do and want to support me in making videos like this, you could check out my merch store below and maybe pick up a shirt. Or you could check out the links below to all the gear that I use. Those are affiliate links, so you cost you no extra money and you can get all the cool gear that I love. And finally, you could consider joining us over on the Ninjan Patreon. It's the number one way that you can help me in making more videos and you get some awesome rewards for doing so, including access to my super exclusive Discord server as well as behind the scenes videos that I put out every single Wednesday. Oh yeah, and if you happen to go to Warhammer Fest in a couple of weeks, make sure you check out the Warp Forge booth and take a look at the model and enter for a chance to bring them home with you. I'm going to see you again back here next week for another video. And if you're subscribed, you'll know that. So make sure that you are. And make sure that sometime between now and then, you find time in your day to slay the gray. It's the heaviest of metals, love. Here on the face, even though typically in minty, minty painting. Minty painting. Also available in Spearmint. Corn Palace in South Dakota. It's a palace. Guess what it's made out of?